Hello there, welcome back. And uh, we've got some news reaching us right now, I believe. Uh, we can join our reporter, Paul Gilmore, who's uh, joined us on set. Um, Paul, uh, I think you've got an update, have you, on the Spurs' search for a new manager. So what can you tell us? Well, Pete, I can tell you the wait is over for Tottenham fans. They now have a new head coach, and that man is Nuno Espero Santo, the former Wolves boss. After four years at Wolves, he left, and he has now joined Tottenham as head coach. He has signed a two-year contract until 2023. So this is the news. Finally, the long-drawn-out long saga of the summer involving the managerial search has come to an end. Jose Mourinho left, of course, on the 19th of April. Ryan Mason took charge until the end of the season. Uh, and then this process has been ongoing. They have uh, tried to get Antonio Conte, Paulo Fonseca uh, and Gennaro Gattuso, amongst others. Certainly those were the more advanced uh, ones, but eventually... You know, it has happened and they have been in this position tonight to announce uh, their new head coach until 2023. Um, we have some comments as well uh, coming through just from Tottenham. Uh, Chairman Daniel Levy has said, uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome uh, Nuno to the club. We should like to thank our supporters for their patience <laughs> throughout this process. Uh, I've spoken already about the need to revert back to our core DNA of playing attacking, entertaining football. And Fabio, uh, and I believe, of course, Fabio Paratici, the new sporting director, believe Nuno is the man who can take, uh, take our talented group of players, uh, embrace our young players coming through and build something special. And, of course, the new sporting director, uh, managing director, rather, uh, Fabio Paratici, has also uh, welcomed Nuno Espirito Santo uh, to Tottenham. He says the brief for this appointment has always been clear. We wanted a head coach that can instill the values that are important important uh, to this football club. You only have to look at Nuno's time at Wolves to see his ability to take a group of players and implement an adaptive style that brings success and allows players to develop and thrive. We're all looking forward to getting started in what we hope will be a successful time with the club. And Nuno Espero himself, uh, Nuno Espero Santo himself has said, when you have a squad full of quality and talent, uh, we want to make the fans proud and them to enjoy it. It's an enormous pleasure and honour to be here. There's joy and I'm happy and looking forward to starting work. We don't have any days to lose and we must start working immediately as pre-season starts in a few days. Uh, the non-Euros players mm -hmm. uh, back on Monday, of course. And that's key, isn't it, as well? Like, so it'll be a relief for everyone at Tottenham and, and the supporters as well that there's someone in charge now with players returning, uh, of course, to pre-season, as you say, in the next few days. And that's why we've seen the Everton announcement. We expect the Crystal Palace announcement as well, don't we, soon? But um, for Nuno himself, I mean, he did a wonderful job at Wolves. He took them from the Championship into the Europa League. They signed a boatload of brilliant players as well under his stewardship. Um, uh, and this, I guess, is a step up for him, though, isn't it? With all due respect to Wolves, and it's a, a, a huge club, aren't they? Tottenham Hotspur, huge history as well, uh, and uh, they'll be expecting to be challenging in the top four. So big challenge for him. But uh, uh, do you expect that now, because you work so closely with Tottenham, that it will be a busy summer as well? Because there's been a lot of talk about the work that needs to happen at Spurs. It's a, it's a time where a lot, of, you know, it's been spoken about, hasn't it? It's, a, it's almost a new dawn for the club in many ways. Yeah, this is a bit the beginning of. of of a new structure uh, completely at Tottenham. You have Par uh, Paratici coming in, you've got Nuno Espirito Santo and the whole point on, on the football side of things is for head coach and for managing director to work closely together on the football side. Uh, and one of the things uh, I mentioned earlier today at the training ground, the, the in-tray uh, will have obviously that uh, the name at the very top of it, Harry Kane, and what happens with him if, as expected, he departs or, or if, he, if he does leave. Spurs are obviously really keen to keep him, but if he does leave, uh, then it could well be a complete rebuild of the squad or there's going to be emphasis on uh, defenders and there's going to be an emphasis on, on a bit of a rebuild so the, this is the, any rebuild will come at a good time with a new managing director and a new head coach there is the belief uh, within Tottenham I should say as well speaking to some people uh, there is a belief that they believe Nuno Espirito Santo can play his teams can play attacking football mm -hmm. I mean you talk to people who followed Wolves throughout his time they will say they'll use the word pragmatic which of course is, is different from boring it's different from a dull side of play but he, he is pragmatic but there have been Nights, um, you know, I remember Wolves beating Arsenal 3-1. Uh, I remember the 4-0 win at home to Espanyol. There were moments when those teams and Nuno Espirito Santo teams could adapt and they could go on and, and go in for the kill against sides. Uh, but yes, uh, you know, it will be put that he is a pragmatic coach. We know he played that 3-5-2 at Wolves quite a lot. Mm. Uh, he 
might be able to get the best out of Matt Doherty as well, who did so well under his uh, leadership uh, at Wolves. Yeah. Uh, and um, th yeah, there is a belief within Spurs that when he has a full complement of players available to him, or when he had a full complement of players without the injuries, about losing Jimenez and all of the problems he had personnel-wise, that, that his teams can play this brand of football. So it's one of those things people will talk about the process and will talk about how long it has taken from Jose Mourinho departing the club. And of course, Espero <laughs> Santo is a disciple of Jose Mourinho. Yeah. Um, people will talk about the process and, and how long it took. But if this is a success and after the first couple of months of the season, Tottenham are, are doing well and they're winning and they're in contention to meet their goals even in the early stage of the season. People forget quite quickly about how long a process took. Um, the point mm -hmm. is they've got someone fresh in, they've got someone new in and somebody who can hit the ground running before pre-season starts on Monday. Oh, thanks so much, Paul. Just looking at the reaction on social media, of course, it's always going to be a bit mixed, isn't it? But the large majority of Spurs fans, with it, from the tweets that I've seen, are just pleased that finally there's a manager in place and they can they can move forward. And but, he, uh, he, does like, he likes to work with a small squad as well. I don't know whether that will come in to play at Tottenham, whether that's going to be something that they look at again. Managing director and head coach will be really working on that. They have been, um, and Fabio Paratici has really driven this appointment as well. Uh, we know that when Nuno Espirito Santo first left Wolves, he was not even in Tottenham's thinking. So there has been a lot of convincing to do uh, for Paratici to convince Levy and, and Daniel Levy and the board that this is the right appointment and they mm. must uh, trust their managing director. And he has been the one driving this managerial process. Uh, so he has got his wish, he has got his man, and those two will be very much looking forward to working with each other. Plenty in his inbox already, you'd think. You'd be priorities, I think you look the future of Harry Kane and other players, big decisions to be made. Yep, we know Manchester City are prepared to pay £100 million. Tottenham have rejected that for Harry Kane. That is not the end of it. That is going, we talk about the managerial saga. We move from the managerial long drawn out saga to the Harry Kane long drawn out saga. That could go on all summer, but Manchester City, um, who have promised to be aggressive and competitive in this market, we're expecting them to come back in for Kane. We're expecting, we know there's still interest from Manchester United and from Chelsea. Uh, whether that has cooled, given that Manchester City seem to be leading the way on this at the moment, mm. that remains to be seen. But certainly there will be a battle to keep hold of Harry Kane. And it very much looked like he was saying goodbye to Tottenham fans in that last home game against Aston Villa. Uh, we told you he had told Tottenham he wants to leave this summer. That is the case. Tottenham have been looking at uh, replacement strikers just in case he does depart. So that will be the biggest thing in, on, on the in-tray. If Harry Kane does leave, the money could potentially be used for that rebuild. If he stays, well then, great from a Nuno Espirito Santo point of view because they've got uh, one of the best strikers in Europe. Um, but that will be obviously the, the biggest deal. And there's a few other things to sort out, as I mentioned, the defensive side uh, of the team, the defensive structure. Uh, and they'll be expecting, obviously, to not concede because we forget Harry Kane and Hyung min Sun scored a lot of goals last season, a lot of goal involvements. But ultimately, it didn't get Spurs anywhere because defensively, as a structure, as a team, they did not quite live up to it and they didn't uh, meet their goals. They'll be playing in the Conference League next season. Yeah. So it does feel like this It feels like this is a, a fresh start, a new challenge a, and, and a bit of a restructure going on. OK, Paul Gilmore, thanks so much. We've got Nuno Espirito Santo as the new manager of Tottenham tonight.